Hello everyone, and welcome back to Occult Perspectives. Tyler Smith here. Um, I just did a video on the Klopoth, and just realized I kind of made a mistake um, when I was talking about the Sphere of Lilith, so I wanted to correct myself. Um, I was getting confused. Um, so if we take, um, and if you're jumping straight into this video, go back and watch the last video that I just posted, um, which is an introduction to the Klopothic tree. And I also talk about Universal Mastery's YouTube channel. Go and check him out. But anyway, the Klopothic tree, if we're looking at it, you know, here's Malkut, and it extends into the sphere of Lilith. Um, they are kind of like one and the same, in a sense. Um, and there's more on that in Kabbalah, Klopoth, and Goetic Magic. Um, which I'm, gonna, I'm going to create a playlist which is going to have four videos now and it's going to be entitled The Left Hand Path. So it's going to be Lucifer, Satan, and the Devil Part 1, Lucifer, Satan, and the Devil Part 2. Check those videos out um, because I cover like the first half of that book quite a, quite a bit. Um, and I'm going to read a little bit from that book about the Klopoth because I didn't actually like define what the Klopoth were in the last video. So I wanted to talk about that as well. Um, that'll be the third video. I'm sorry, those two videos, the Lucifer, Satan, and the Devil, part one and two. And then the third video is the last video that I just uploaded today. Um, it should be going live right about now, um, which is the introduction to the Klopoth. And then this will be part two to that video. Um, so make sure to check out the entire playlist, The Left Hand Path. But anyway, I was, um, I was thinking that the sphere of Gamaliel, I believe it's called, was... Um, this sphere, but this whole sphere, it's called Lilith, and then her reign extends into Gamaliel, the next sphere. So I, I did want to clarify that real quick. Um, let me go ahead. Um, let me go ahead and read from that real quick. We'll, t we'll go into the sphere of Gamaliel. I read a little bit about the sphere of Lilith um, in the last video. I didn't read the whole section on it. So we'll read a little bit about uh, Gamaliel, I think is how we say it. I wish I could just mark these spots so I could go straight to them. See, I went too, I've gone too far now. Okay, Lilith. There's Lilith. Gamaliel. So Lilith's influence continues into the next cliff-off. Here she has taken a more personified shape as the ruling demoness of Gamaliel. The position of Lilith on Gamaliel plays an important part in her role as the queen of the world. And it is from here that she controls the world by being its hidden underlying force. And this would equate to Yasad on the Tree of Life, and which would normally be the Archangel Gabriel with purple robes and... Uh, the crown with the moon on it, the crescent moon. She plays an important part as the queen of the world. It is from here that she controls the world by being its hidden underlying force. Gamaliel is the shadow of Anima Mundi, the world soul. Um, I believe um, Freud uses that term too, maybe. Gamaliel is the dream sphere and the dark side of Yasad. The dreams that man normally cannot or does not wish to remember in the waking state can be found within Gamaliel. These dark dreams have a revealing character and expose sides of oneself that one might not want to accept. The dark dreams are censored by the superego and are repressed to the Gamaliel Klopah. So once again, it's that whole theme of digging deep into it and extracting it. So that power is for yourself. It's not just, um, things aren't censored by your ego and then you're just repressing it. That's what most people are doing with their, with their passions, um, is repressing them um, rather than using them for their true potential. Thus Gamaliel is the cliff of dark dreams. Gamaliel is above all the sphere of forbidden sexuality. While Adam and Eve represent sexuality of a dutiful nature whose purpose is reproduction, Lilith and her demonic lovers correspond to an initiatory sexuality in which the force of Eros is used to reach higher states of mind. A dark magician enters Gamaliel to become fully aware of the mechanisms of sexuality and thus cease to be enslaved under hidden instincts. The origin of lust is also revealed on this cliffah. 
the magician will reach an understanding of the structures of the basic instincts and learn how to use sexuality for magical progression. Um, there's a lot more on that one as well, and then it goes on into Samael, which is the, which is the next sphere, um, which I believe would correspond with Hod, if they're going in order. says which Sephiroth corresponds with. But that would make sense. And then Netzach would be Arab Zarak. Okay. Anyway. So I wanted to clear that up. I wanted to go ahead and read you. This is going to be a pretty short video. Um, I just wanted to clear up some things and not misguide you. Um, I'm going to read you just a little bit on what the Klipfah, what they are. As soon as I find that part. I probably just need to go to the index and then it would be a lot easier to find this stuff. I would know exactly which page it's on. Chapter on the nature of evil. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go to the index real quick. This is. I have everything zoomed up close. There we go. The Klopoth. Um, and that's basically where your soul can get shelled, so to speak. Um, it's where you your soul becomes removed from your, your body, your vessel, here on the material plane. You can get stuck in those Klopothic realms. The breaking of the vessels was a catastrophe. What could be more unbearable than an aborted world? There must have been some defect in the cosmos from the beginning and not even the most learned rabbis have been able to explain it completely. Perhaps at the moment God exhaled and was emptied, a few drops of oil lay in the first recept receptacle, a material residue, the reshimu, thus adulterating God's essence, or perhaps the seashells, the clapot, the beginnings of ruin were slyly waiting in ambush somewhere. That's from something else, a different work. It's like a quote. The waste products <clears throat> that are associated with evil create a demonic anti-structure to the tree of life and the ten sephiroth. These waste products are called klipoth, kelipot, or klipoth with a Q. So sometimes it has a K. And then there's multiple spellings with the Q as well, which means uh, skin, bark, or shells. Uh, the klipoth constitutes some sort of leftovers from creation. They are banished from the tree of life through certain cleansing processes but are constantly tormenting man from their own demon demonic anti-world. Sometimes the Klopoth appear in the shape of evil temptations and occasionally as actual demons that man must protect himself against. The Klopoth arise in connection with the primordial evil worlds and their destruction, but have in some interpretations an even more primeval existence than God. This is interesting. And if you've watched the other videos that I was talking about that I've done, um, even in the beginning, there was a separation. There was a part of creation that wanted to be involved and active in a, an active participant in creation itself. And then there was another aspect of that original source before the tree of life was even created that did not want to partake in the tree in creation. So it was like anti-life, so to speak. And even as we know, the void or the ein is not technically, it's nothing but 
in all actuality, it's all potentiality. The potential for anything and all things. The Kabbalists generally view the judging side of God, Gabura, um, on the tree of life as the main factor. We've talked about this in this previous videos before, so a lot of this is going to be a review. And as I said, I recommend that you go and read Kabbalah, Klopoth, and Goetic Magic um, on your own, because um, I'm just reading parts of this book. I recommend reading the entire thing if you really want to learn a lot, um, as I am going to do again. Um, so Gabura is the main factor behind the creation of the Kopoth. This has been described in a manner that is reminiscent of the rebellion of Lucifer against God and his order. This confirms the impression that from the beginning, Gabura already has an independent existence that corresponds to Satan or Samael. G Gabura breaks out of the Sephirotic unity because it's opposite of mercy. Gabura already has an independent existence that corresponds to Satan or Samael. It breaks out of the Sephirotic unity and clear, declares, I shall rule. It is forced back into the Sephirotic balance, but certain parts of its force escape. These parts of Gabura turned against God and began their own emanations, which the Kabbalists describe as a mockery against the divine worlds. Just as the worlds of the Sephirot of ten number, the emanation consists of ten dark anti-worlds. Um, with Da being the portal that leads to them. The primordial demonic couple Samael and Lilith, who represent the Klopoth, rule them. The Kabbalists refer to the Klopothic worlds as bastards and claim that they correspond to the act of creation, but in the form of illegitimate sexuality. And we know today, in today's world, how, you know, how shallow marriage usually is anyway. Very rarely that two people that are married is it actually souls that are really working on themselves and you know trying to attain you know unity with the divine is that usually the case no they're just lost kind of in the matrix of things you know so to speak um, so to me marriage true marriage has kind of lost all of its merit people don't really know what it means to merge with another person that's a that's a huge undertaking if you're really wanting to merge your soul with another person you know, that's a whole different topic or, or subject. Um, marriage. <laughs> anyway. The Klopoth are called the excrements of creation and are occasionally associated with the material world and sometimes with something that is even lower and worse in the Kabbalistic hierarchy. Certain Kabbalistic scholars want to connect the Klopoth with the Asaya or Asiya, the lowest level on the tree of life to which the Sephirath Malkut belongs. But at the same time, the ten Klopothic anti-worlds correspond to the entire Sephirotic structure with all four planes. So some only want to connect it with the lowest level, but they actually correspond to all four planes. So you have the, the world of substance, the Saya, and then the highest is the Atsaluth, the world of archetypes, uh, the element of fire, the world of emanation. The ten Klopothic worlds are populated by demons and evil beings in the Kabbalah unveiled by the 19th century Kabbalist and Hermetic S.L. McGregor Matthews. We see that name all the time, especially with the Lesser Keys of Solomon, which contains a collection of Zohar texts originally published. And Asaya and the evil worlds are described as thus. The fourth is the Asiatic world, the world of action, called also the world of shells, which is this world of matter made up of the grosser elements of the other three, but in it is also the abode of the evil spirits, which are called the shells by the Kabbalah, Klopoth material shells. The devils are also divided into 10 classes and have suitable habitations. So that's all I'm gonna read as far as what they talk about. Um, the Klopoth, there's a chapter, it looks like that's actually called just the Klopoth, and it's like one, two, three, four. The chapter's called the Klopoth, and then it goes into, that's the introduction of the chapter, and then it goes into demonology. So, yeah, anyway. This whole book is worth a read. Um, Kabbalah, Kapoth, and Goetic Magic. Go and check out Universal Mastery's YouTube channel. And then one last thing I wanted to share before I end this video was there was a time in my life where the Lilith, oh, informing me of low battery. There was a time in my life where the Lilith aspect 
kind of made itself synchronistically manifested in my life. Um, it was like the the year 2019. Um, in the year 2019, um, I had like a really, sorry, somebody commented on my video that I just posted, it looks like. I wasn't able to see it though. Um, but in 2019, um, I had like a really rough breakup. It was, it needed to happen. I was already, you know, like kind of like moving in the opposite direction anyway. And I was in a band, a Grateful Dead tribute band called Terrapin Moon. And I had just happened to ride around a Lilith new moon. And I had just been learning about the aspect or the archetype of Lilith, you know, who she was, the first wife of Adam and how she was kind of this liberating force, you know, that breaks you out of bondage uh, when things don't serve you anymore. And I met this girl that night um, named Lily, and I thought that was a really cool synchronicity. And then she kind of continued to talk to me, and we ended up kind of hanging out, and she's still a dear friend to this day. And um, that was kind of a catalyst for getting me out of that relationship at the time, um, of freeing my mind. Um, and that was, you know, that was like her role at that point in my life was to help me see oh here's somebody that I'm not even in a relationship with and you know there's so much life and so much beauty there and um, I just started spending time with that person and um, it was this liberating force that helped me feel a lot freer and then my life changed from that point onwards as well it's like really ever since you know 2016 I would say you know the the reality that has been manifest has has progressively changed. It's like I'm not even living in the same world. I think in some ways, in my app, in some aspects of my life, I've been through, you know, consciously very dark places, and I've, you know, experimented with consciousness so much. In some ways, I think I have kind of worked with the darker side a lot, but not in an initiatory structure, um, and nothing like the Kapoth, you know, actually going through and working yourself through those spheres. But there have been like moments in my life which are definitely dark night of the soul moments where you like break your ego. Your ego basically um, gets broken down and then you have to almost like relearn life again. Um, I've had those moments of transformation, especially being a quadruple Scorpio in my astrological chart, four planets in Scorpio, you know, sun, moon, Mars, and Mercury. So I just wanted to share that little tidbit of information too. I thought that was kind of cool how that all lined up and aligned in my life. So, alrighty, I think that's enough videos for today. Um, so I hope there's not an audio problem. Um, I hope you can hear me. My videos are not usually like that loud um, to begin with. So you're gonna have to turn up the, you know, turn up the volume all the way. You know, maybe um, put the put the video on the Bluetooth in the car and turn that volume all the way up or play YouTube on the television. If your phone speaker is not a lot loud enough to hear, you know, my voice in these videos. So. Anyway, everyone, um, you know, peace and blessings. I hope, you know, you all have a great day. Um, you know, take this knowledge to heart. Um, start learning about the dark side a little bit. Start learning about the shadow aspe aspects of things, you know, and it'll help you not get so caught up in things because I feel like focusing on the light and focusing on manifestation and making sure I'm, you know, trying to be all perfect and everything and just banish, banish, banish. Um, in a way, I was just pushing away progress, you know, and there's this stasis that happens. And so, you know, I've worked with it. I've changed the cardinal directions. I'm working on that and implementing that into everything now. So just trying to make some fixes, you know, we're always learning. We're continuing to grow. So... Let's continue this journey together. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. So I'm gonna, gonna leave it there. Um, thank you for subscribing as always. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for making it through these videos and ha actually having the patience to watch, listen, and then you know um, spread this knowledge so that others can learn as well. So peace and blessings, everyone. Thank you so much. Until next time.